Hey guys, it's been forever and I apologize, but I have been reading and I actually um, completed my first readathon, which was the Seven Books in Seven Days readathon. That was created by Frankie from Instead of Gold and Marlon from Marlon Alina. I read nine books. They're really short though, so um, I don't think you'll be too impressed. Let's start with uh, the first one, which was the, uh, Minority Report by Philip K. Dick. This is set in the future where a person's intentions to commit a crime can be detected before they have a chance to carry it out, and that leads to their arrest. The system's creator is John Anderton, and it is perceivably perfect in every way until it names him as the future murderer of a man he has never even met. I consider this to be a very smart read. Um, there's so many different possibilities for how it could have ended, and I love that. Um, there's a lot of action, and the plot just keeps like twisting around in your hands as you're reading it. And um, even after it's finished, I could still feel it kind of wriggling around in the back of my mind. So on day two, I read um, volume four of the webcomic Crossed. This is written by Simon Spurrier and drawn by Fernando Melek. And the premise of Crossed is that this global virus has broken out, and it's um, markedly infected with this, like, cross-like formation across their face and it brings them to act upon their darkest desires such as rape, mutilation, oh, bestiality, just to name a few things. And um, the webcomic is specifically kind of told from the point of view of a survivor named Shaky and his life with others off the coast of Scotland. This volume is just like the ones before it where it does not shy away from exploring the deepest kind of parts of our humanity, our depravity, our selfishness, our love for people. Um, it's very moving as well as you know, incredibly graphic. This is not for the lighthearted. Um, even fans of The Walking Dead might be a little disgusted by <laughs> what the creators come up with. Um, but I'd highly recommend this for anyone who loves horror that is plot-driven. I'll provide the link for Crossed in the description box. And then on to the third book, which was Five Flavors of Dumb by Anthony John. Our main girl here is Piper, she's deaf, and she starts a bet with her high school's rock band named Dumb. Um, the bet is that she can make them successful acting as their manager. I think a few of these characters in this book are just wonderful. I especially love Piper. I love her confidence, um, which kind of borders on arrogance, but it's a natural kind of um, personality that she has. It's not, I don't know, it seems very realistic to me, just her behavior. Usually when I read books with deaf characters, they're the complete opposite. They're very um, self-pitying, weak, don't stand up for themselves. I just, I love this girl. <laughs> this is a very dramatic story, and that's not my thing exactly because a lot of their problems I thought could be solved, you know, just by talking or using rational thought. But, um, I guess like, it's fun for some people. So, it's not like a huge negative about the book. I think this book will be really interesting for fans of music, specifically rock, and for people who are interested in the deaf world. Because um, I think to a lot of people, Music and deafness don't go together, and the author, Anthony, um, did a great job just mixing the two. Then I read John Steinbeck's The Pearl, which is about a man named Kino. He finds this enormous and valuable pearl, and though he hopes that it will change his life for the better, it um, goes very sour, and it's a beautiful, tragic story. And just like with other John Steinbeck books, it explores human nature and corruption. I think one of the best things about this book is its musicality, and I've said that before about other books, but no, there's like real music in this. There's certain things that have songs, like there's the song of the family and the song of the pearl, and it's just a really neat way to um, tell you more about what's going on in the story. And oh, the writing, gorgeous writing. I think John Steinbeck is one of the best American writers. He's my personal Jesus. <laughs> he saves me um, from reading bad books and this is probably one of the best books I've read in a long time. The next two stories that I read were both by Shirley Jackson. They were The Lottery and The Tooth. 
Now the lottery is about a small town that has a tradition that every year the townspeople gather and they pull pieces of paper out of this mysterious black box. Can't say much more about it because it's five pages long. And what amazed me about it is how fast um, Shirley Jackson works to create suspense. It's pretty impressive. Um, then with the tooth, this is about a woman named Claire. She's traveling quite a distance to visit a dentist about her toothache. It's kind of a surreal story, really kind of hazy, deals a lot with self-identity. Out of the two, I definitely prefer the lottery because the tooth was a little bit too abstract for me. Um, even though we were looking so closely at the character of Claire, like through a magnifying glass, I didn't connect with her because there's nothing really there to connect with. She doesn't seem to know herself very well. I'll just say that. I also read Daphne du Maurier's Don't Look Now, where a couple is visiting Venice after the loss of their daughter, and they meet a set of psychic twins who foresee danger if the couple should stay in Venice. Very strange story. I would have really liked it if I had not have found the characters to be so insufferable. Um, but overall, it was all right. Had a very um, appealing plot to me. Then came Hamlet, which I did not pick up because of the plot, but rather because I have a real deep appreciation for Shakespeare's skill with words, as well as I wanted to understand the context behind some of the great speeches in the story, like to be or not to be. My edition is um, from the library Oxford World's Classics and has a lot of helpful footnotes which I found to be quite necessary to understand some of the references being made as well as the language. This is a tragedy but it's not as tragic to me as um, John Steinbeck's The Pearl. Um, but still, who can say anything bad about this? It's Shakespeare. <laughs> Lastly, I have Ari or Ari Seth Cohen's book Advanced Style. Um, which is also a blog and a movie. This is like a photographic love ballad to older men and women who are deeply in touch with their own personal sense of style. It's filled with beautiful photographs of the most charming, interesting people I've ever seen and their advice from all their life experience. There's not a lot of writing in this book, but it's got a lot of soul and inspiration for readers of all ages. Um, I'll link um, down in the description box his blog and his YouTube channel. First of all though, I want to share like some of my favorite pictures with you. That woman with the gray hair, she's like amazing. Just love the wraps. It's beautiful colors. If you guys have read any of these books or want to read them, ring my bell. Okay, see ya. Bye.